Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the ambiguous case of the law of signs. So these are some of my least favorite problems in math, and that's because they're very tedious and very difficult, and I forget this all the time, which is why I'm making this video. I'm not making it for you. Make no mistake, I'm making this for me. I'm selfish. Because I forget this all the time, and then I have to tutor some kid, and they're asking, what's the ambiguous case? And I'm like, I have no idea. So now I have to look it up. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I'm making this video to show how you do the ambiguous case of the law of signs. So the first thing I need to say is this is specifically for triangles in the SSA configuration, which again, I would never, ever spell backwards, because why would you? But let's say I've got a triangle that looks like this, and you have a side 6, another side 12, and an angle of 30 degrees. So in other words, SSA. What I'm going to tell you is that with this triangle, you can have a bunch of different things. You can have two triangles as your answer, one triangle as your answer, or sometimes no triangle as your answer. Very confusing. And I'm going to be talking about every case today so that you understand what's going on in this class. So the first thing I need to say is that this can be broken down into two subcategories. If your angle is acute or if your angle is obtuse. Let's start with acute. So if you have an acute angle, the first thing you're going to start with is the law of sines, which says sine A over A equals sine B over B, or you can do sine C over C as well. I don't care. But basically, when you do the law of sines and you know, you do the whole thing, you plug it in the formula, you eventually plug it in your calculator, you're either going to get one of three results. The first thing that can happen is that your calculator will literally say error. When that happens, it means no triangle formed. There are no triangles. And I'll explain why that happens in a minute. The second case that you can happen is that you get the angle as 90 degrees exactly. When that happens, you're going to have one triangle as your answer. And then the last case you can have is that your angle is less than 90 degrees in which case you're going to have two triangles. And to find the second triangle, and really the second angle, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do 180 minus x, or whatever your angle is, and that's going to be the angle of your second triangle, 180 minus x. And again, that's all if you have an acute angle. In this case, the 30 degrees is acute. We're going to be doing the acute strategy for this one. Then we have obtuse. So for obtuse, the first thing you do, you don't even do law of signs. The first thing you do, you check if it's impossible or not. And I'll show you what I mean there when we get there. But then after you get past the impossible case, you then get to do the law of signs, sine A over A equals sine B over B. And again, I can have two possible results here. The first result for the obtuse angle is again, you get an error on your calculator, and then that just means there's no triangle. We actually kind of like that case because that means less work for us, right? So that's nice. And then the second case you can have is that you get, well, literally anything, like whatever answer you get, that's just gonna be your one triangle and that's your answer. And I'll explain why you can't have two triangles for the obtuse case later on in this video. But first of all, these are the one, two, three, four, five, six cases you can have for the ambiguous case of the law of signs. Yes, I hate it just as much as you do. Probably more because you only have to see this once in your life and then you never have to do it again. I do this for a living. I have to see this like once every couple months. It's terrible, I know. But here, let's do this first one that we said we would do. So I have this triangle right here, side length six, side length 12, 30 degree angle. Again, this is acute. So I just set up the law of signs. Let's call this angle A and this side length A, because remember, your angle and side are always opposites of each other. I will then call this side length B and this angle B, and we're going to be solving for angle B here. Now, let me show you what happens. I'm going to do sine of A, which is sine 30, divided by A, which is 6, equals sine of B, which is what we're solving for. I'm solving for B, divided by side B, which is 12. So if I want to solve for sine b, I cross multiply. And so it's going to be 12 sine 30 degrees 
equals 6 sine b. Divide both sides by 6. So 12 sine 30 degrees over 6 equals sine b. I plug this in my calculator. Amazingly, I just get 1. Ain't that cool? And then to solve for b, you just have to take the arc sine of 1. And now here's the possibility where you get error 90 degrees or no triangle. So basically, you cannot take the arc sine of a number greater than 1 or less than negative 1. In other words, if this was, let's say, arc sine of 2, your calculator is going to say error and there's no triangle. Now, luckily, we have 1 here and 1 is fine. If it was any bigger than 1, even 1.01, then I would get an error. So the arc sine of 1, you get 90 degrees. And this is the case I said where it would be one triangle. And why is it one triangle? Why isn't it two triangles? Well, because if we said two triangles, you would say 180 minus 90. You'd get 90. That's the exact same thing. So in other words, one triangle. So I'm going to fill that in right here. This is 90 degrees. In other words, it's a right triangle. That's cool. And now the only two things that are missing on this triangle are angle C and side length C. And if you wanted to find those, well, angle C is really easy to find because it's just all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So in other words, 90 plus 30 is 120 and 180 minus 120 is 60. So in other words, angle C is 60 degrees. And then if you wanted to find side C, you would just use law of signs. I'm not going to do that in this video. If you want to do law of signs over and over again, watch my law of signs video. I just want to focus on the ambiguous case in this video. Okay, so that's the first one. There was only one triangle. Yay! That was one of the six cases we could have had. So here's the next one. I have a triangle that looks like this. This angle over here is 26 degrees. This side is 7. And this side is four. Again, I have angle si Ooh, that was close. I almost said a bad word. I have side side angle, just like we said we would. And this is also an acute angle. So in other words, I'm doing the acute case. I'm also going to call this angle A, this side A, this angle B, and the seven side B. You can technically call it C if you really want to. I don't care. I'm going to call it B. So in other words, I have to do sine of 26 degrees over side A, which is 4, equals angle B, which I don't know, divided by side B, which is 7. Now I'm going to cross multiply. 7 times the sine of 26 is equal to 4 sine B. Divide both sides by 4. Let's see what we get. Equals sine B. So 7 times the sine of 26 divided by 4 that's going to be 0.767 equals sine b. And since this is less than 1, it means I am going to have a triangle. And to find what the triangle is, I just got to take the arc sine of it. And let's see what this gets in my calculator. 50.1 degrees. Now, as promised, this is going to be the case of two triangles. The way you find the second triangle is by doing 180 minus your angle, 50.1, and you're going to get an angle of 129.9 degrees. There's the second angle. Now here's where the ambiguous case gets really annoying, and I am really not happy about this. So basically, when we are using the law of sines, it's typically to solve triangles. In other words, find all the angles and all the sides. But because you have two angles, it means you have two potential different answers. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the first one, angle A, angle B, angle C, that was 26, we just solved for B, and we got 50.1, and angle C is unknown. Then you have side A, side B, and side C. And now what I'm saying is we have an alternate case where A is 26 degrees, B is now 129.9 degrees, C is unknown, A is, actually I think we know A, yeah A is 4 for both, and I think we know B for both as well, yeah B is 7 for both of them, but for everything that remains, there's two potential different answers here, and we're going to solve for both, because that's what your teacher might make you do, and so I want to have you prepared. 
So to find the first C, we're just going to focus about the left column first. Again, all angles have to add up to 180. So 26 plus 50.1 equals 76.1. 180 minus 76.1. What's that? We get 103.9 degrees. So that's angle C, 103.9 degrees. And then if you want to find side C, you're going to have to do the law of sines, which I don't feel like doing, but you can. Then for angle C, the way you find it is you add up again the two angles. So 26 plus 129.9 is 155.9. And then you got to do 180 minus 155.9. And you'll get an angle of 24.1 degrees. So that's this angle here. And then again, you can do law of sines to find side length C. But the point I'm trying to make here is that we had two different triangles and both of them are correct. So that's it for this example. Let's continue and look at the next one. For the next one, why don't you pause the video and try it on your own. But here's the setup. I've got a 43 degree angle here. This is side length 14 and this is side length 5. And I would like you to tell me how many triangles there are one, two, or zero, and then if there are one or two triangles, go ahead and solve them for me. Okay, so I'm assuming you paused the video, and now I'm going to show you the solution. So first, I'm going to call this angle A, this side A across from it, I'll call 14 side B, and then the angle across from it, angle B. And since this is acute, I'm going to do the thing where I just start with sine A over A equals sine B over B, my favorite. This is the law of sines, by the way, if I haven't said that already. So the sine of 43 degrees over side A is 5 equals sine B, which I don't know, divided by 14. So now I'm going to cross multiply. 14 sine of 43 degrees equals 5 times the sine of B. Divide both sides by 5, and then I'll plug this in my calculator and see what I get we get 1.91 equals the sine of B. And again, since this is greater than 1, I immediately know it's going to be an error in my calculator when I do the arc sine. Like I'm saying arc sine or inverse sine of 1.91 will get me that error that I just said. In other words, no triangle and we're done. I love no triangle. It's the easiest case. Okay, so that's it for that problem. Hopefully you got that right. And now for the next two problems, we're going to be looking at the obtuse triangle, and we're going to see how it's different than what we just did. So here we go. This big angle right here is obtuse. It's 108 degrees. This side is 3, and this side is 6. Now, if you remember what I said for the obtuse triangle, I said there's three cases. Let me scroll up to the very beginning. I said that we could have had impossible. First, we actually check for impossible. Then if it's not impossible, then we do law of signs. In which case we get an error, which means no triangle, or if you do get an answer, it's just one triangle. Okay, so how do we tell if it's impossible? Here's how. With any obtuse triangle, this is obtuse, the biggest angle needs to have the biggest side. And if it doesn't, then it's impossible. And when I say it has it, I'm saying this is A, angle A, this is side A because it's across from it. This is angle B, this is side B. But as we can see here, 6 is greater than 3. In other words, side B is greater than side A. And that is impossible. Why is it impossible? Because if this is obtuse, this needs to be the biggest side. It's not the biggest. So in other words, impossible. The actual answer is no triangle. We're done. Easy peasy. Okay, so that's what you're checking for the impossible case. Again, you always have to check that whenever you have an obtuse triangle. And now let's just do the same exact thing, except this time I'm going to switch. So it's six and three. So in other words, this time we know for sure we're good. The biggest angle has the biggest side. Again, I'll call this A, A, B, and B. And then therefore this is C and C. And one more thing I want to say, this again, we're, we need to make sure we have side, side, angle, side, side, angle. We're good. This is why we're doing the ambiguous case. If it was anything else, like angle, side, angle, or side, angle, side, then we would be doing either law of sines or law of cosines. 
not the ambiguous case. You wouldn't even have to check any of that for law of sines or law of cosines. It's pretty nice. But now all you gotta do is say sine A, which is sine of 108, divided by A, which is six, equals sine of B, which I don't know, divided by side length B, which is three. Cross multiply, we're gonna get three sine of 108 degrees equals six sine B. Divide both sides by six, and I'm gonna plug this in my calculator. And we get 0.476 is equal to the sine of B. At which point now I just have to take the inverse sine of 0.476, and I got an angle of 28.4 degrees, that's B. That's angle B. Now one thing I do wanna say is that why don't we do the 180 minus thing? Let's actually just do it to see what we get. 180 minus 28.4, that would potentially be an angle of 151.6. And I'll just label that on my triangle here and then you'll tell me what's wrong with it. What's wrong with having this as my potential angle? That's right, kids. You're gonna get way over 180 degrees for this triangle because you cannot have two obtuse angles in a triangle. You can only have one or else you're gonna get over 180 degrees. So that's why when you already have an obtuse angle, you can't have two, you can only have one triangle and so then you can solve for the rest of this. We just found B, we said it was 28.4 degrees. That means you can find C by doing 108 plus 28.4, which is 136.4, and then you do 180 minus that number to find the missing angle, and that's 43.6, so I'm saying the last angle is 43.6, and then if you wanna find side C, again, you can use law of sines, I don't care, that's not the point of this video. And that's basically it. Now one thing I think I'm realizing now that I look at it, I don't think it's possible that you ever even have an error with the obtuse case because I feel like it gets sorted out with the impossible case instead. But anyways, that's the ambiguous case of the law of signs. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, which is not very much. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.